Hi, my name is Jason Morgan. Welcome into my studio. And on this video, I'm going to show you how I draw a really, really detailed cheetah. The thing that attracted me to it is the color change from the dark, shadowy side of the body and the face over to a really vibrant, sunlit side. Um, but I thought at the beginning, I, what I'm going to do is give you an introduction, a brief introduction to pastels, because I know lots of you are switching over to pastels, you're excited about them but perhaps you don't know what to actually buy or what you need. And I've only recently discovered pastels myself, but I've had 20 years of painting with oils and doing uh, lots of other mediums as well. So I'm bringing that experience over to the pastels. And I found lots of um, things at the beginning. Now I, I made a few mistakes in the purchases and now I've got the right supply. So let, let me share that with you so you can got a good chance of getting some great success with your pastel drawings straight off. So most critical for me, paper type. Now I'm using on most things pastel matte. Now I'm using a grey colour on this cheetah and it's in this set. The grey is actually in there as you can see and there's lots of other nice colours as well to pick from. Pastel matte is a really good paper and what I love about it, it allows me to, to layer upon layer upon layer with the pastels. Now, there's lots of other pastel papers out there that are really not suitable to this type of technique whatsoever. And they're the things that I started with and I bought years and years ago. And I had a complete disaster with them. Couldn't get anything to work. They wouldn't layer. Couldn't understand how I'd ever get detail with them. I put it all to the side and that was the end of pastels for probably 10 or 15 years. So if you get the wrong materials with this, and it's not always the most expensive you've got to buy, but if you get the wrong materials, that could be end of game. Pastel mat, it works. Pastel card, that's another, by Sennelia I think that is, that's another one that works. It's similar to pastel mat, but it's a bit more gritty, but the same very sandy, texture to it that holds lots of layers. I've seen some great work with UART um, sanded paper as well. I haven't tried it myself but perhaps if you're in the USA and you can't get hold of pastel mat or pastel card perhaps that's another choice for you. But what you want is one of these sanded types of papers. They hold the layers. It's critical so get that. Next up is the type of pastels you're going to be using. Now I've got pastel pencils if I show you my set by you. These are Carbothellos. I go over this, all these supplies on YouTube quite in depth. But Carbothello is a good price. Fantastic colour range. You can buy them in a big set like this for a reasonable price. And they work. Without a doubt, they work. I also like to get little pastel sticks. Now, the pastel sticks, they're great for detail as well. So you can see that there. Perhaps the wrong colour to pick, a flesh coloured one, but yeah, they're quite small and you can sharpen them to a, a nice point. And when you get them nice and sharp, you can get some really great details with those as well. And they're punchy. The colours are a bit more punchy than pencils. So they're great for vibrant colours, especially like I'm going to be doing on the one side of this cheetah's face. Okay, so what else have we got? When you're doing backgrounds, so far I've had great success with these pan pastels. Now they're a pastel, as you can see they're in a little, this is a set. They all come out individually and you can buy them in smaller sets like these as well and these screw off. And they're great for doing backgrounds because you can use tools with them such as these. Okay so just a brief introduction, you can use tools, you can rub them on there. Great for backgrounds because they spread out nice and evenly. I've also used them for the underdrawing. And on this video, you're going to see me using black and white to create a tonal drawing. And that's a bit of a map then for me to build upon. And you'll also see me using the pan pastels for the background. Nice green background, some vibrant greens on the one side, muted greens on the other. And the pan pastels are superb for just giving a really smooth blend. So those tools, those supplies, they're going to give you a really good start. Now you don't have to buy hundreds and hundreds of colours. Pan pastels, 
you know they're fairly expensive they last a long time you can buy you know just the colors you want just a yellow and a, perhaps a couple of greens and a blue for the background there because you can mix your own colors um, the black is good to have in there and the white with the pencils I found you get much much better value if you buy them in a set if you're coming over from colored pencils because perhaps you've been frustrated and how difficult or how time-consuming colored pencils are or perhaps because you can't layer a light over a dark very easily I think you're going to have a lot more luck and success and feel much more confident with the pastel pencils so I wasn't scared in spending money on a 60 pencil set of Carbothellos with the little sticks I also bought a set of them and they're Conti they make that I use they was quite reasonable to buy in that set as well and there's lots of sales usually online if you search around I had those in a sale I had the Carbothellos in a sale the Derwent pencils I was lucky I had Derwent send them to me so I've got a set of those as well but you know if you've got Derwent they work great if you've got Carbothello they work great I wouldn't necessarily go buy in two sets of everything you don't need duplicates and it's expensive there's some other brands of pencils out there Karen Dash have got uh, probably one of the best known ones and they are also the most expensive but for me I find them too soft if you're using Velo paper instead and you want to go that route which personally I haven't had much luck with at all you're probably going to need the Carbothello pencils just to um, make marks on there because they need to be nice and soft okay so let's keep it very basic you need some pencils you want some sticks really for the background you can use the sticks on the background if you don't want to use pan pastels yet I've got a video on my YouTube channel with an owl and I've got a nice blue background in there and I did that with the Condi sticks the paper personally first if it's your first time or if you're just starting I would get a set of pastel matte and I'd get mid-tone colors now next question people normally ask me how do I sharpen them I see videos all the time online of people using uh, razor blades to sharpen the pastel pencils they say there's no other way well personally I don't like using the razor blades it takes so long to sharpen I use a pencil sharpener a crank handle one I use a swordfish one and I've got another one then by a company called let me just check M M and R and I've tested those I've got a video on YouTube showing how I've tested them and they really really work well I get minimal breakages with the pencils whatsoever especially on the Carbothello that's a little bit harder pencil and these sharpeners in just a few seconds I've got a nice sharp point so that's how I do it with the sharpeners every couple of um, sharpens I do with the pastels so perhaps after a session I'll get a graphite pencil in the sharpener and give that a couple of turns it helps to keep the blade nice and sharp stops the breakages so you know supplies is really easy there's nothing complicated about it the paper I've told you what to get let's have a look at the video you can go through it then and see how I'm doing these techniques this is not a basic video this is a really difficult subject that I'm going to show you with the big color changes and lots of fur detail but I wanted to show you how I do one of my best paintings so I hope you enjoy the video okay so to start the video I've got my drawing transferred um, I used graphite paper and it's onto the pastel matte paper and now I'm using pan pastels which are like a little cake of um, compressed pastel I'm using some of their tools as well they're called soft tools basically it looks like a makeup sponge on the end um, they've said that it's a specially designed sponge to pick up the pastel and what I'm going to do is just use that tool to very basically put in the darks so just as I would with a, a normal pastel using um, one of the little sticks you see on the right so this is taking the place of that really and I'm just going to apply this in the same way onto the highlights white would have done just the same but I thought I'd just give this little um, very very pale pinky color a go for a change so once again nothing complicated there and now all I'm doing is just kitchen tissue again and just wiping the highlights down so once again just trying to create that ghostly image so you can see I've already got a three-dimensional looking drawing very quickly 
the pan pastels work easily and I'm just taking off the excess amount of uh, pastel so I'm not filling the tooth of the paper up as I said and the pastel matte paper will allow many many layers more than most other papers anyway but this helps it along as well okay so let me show you the speeded up version for my YouTube channel and whilst you're seeing this progress I wanted to say how much I'm in love with pastel pencils and pastels at the moment they are so much easier than colored pencils I had real problems when I've tried to do a couple of colored pencils after the oils I've done for 20 years and you know what colored pencils they just completely the opposite of oils you can reserve those whites you can't do a light easily over a dark and pastels was something that I had a go of about 15 years ago but I had the wrong materials I didn't use the right paper I didn't use the right pencils and nothing worked at all now I've switched over and I've got the correct paper one that will allow me to do layer after layer as you can see in this video and I've got some really nice pencils as well that are not too expensive at all nowhere near as expensive as the colored pencils I was using and I found it is so much easier than colored pencils and it's very very similar to oil painting so what I mean by that is as you've seen in this drawing already I put a dark underlay down using Conti pastel sticks I smudged it with my finger or with a, a stump just to get a nice base layer dark base layer and then built up on top and now I've used on that um, background I was using some pan pastels you saw the round um, pans and they're really easy to use with soft um, tools as well and they give you a perfect background that's so difficult to get with oil paints almost impossible to get with acrylics and would take forever and ever with colored pencils but with pastels it goes on really really quickly with those pan pastels super smooth but the absolute best things about pastels are you can just pick them up and put them down you haven't got to go mixing colors or having you know a special area like you do with oil paints there's no smell to them and it's very easy to get softness with fur you can just put it on there and then use your finger and a very light touch to get a super soft appearance and the more you smudge it the softer it goes and then you can use pencils that are easy to sharpen with the review that I've got on my YouTube channel so you use a nice sharp pencil and you can get as much detail as you want on your subject with them and the absolute best thing of all you can put a light on top of a dark because the pastels are so opaque you can have a really dark under layer and then you can bring your white strokes over on top and you'll see how I do that when I put the whiskers in now really really easy with the pastels and just a wonderful medium to use if you're looking for more art resources I've really got you covered I've got a dedicated tutorial website that's jasonmorgan.co.uk lots of videos on there ebook tutorials you name it it's on that site I've got a patreon art channel so every month I put up brand new videos and that could be pastel videos oils charcoals the full-length videos and there's also photo references with the easy trace line art on there I've got quite a few hundred people supporting me and that's on patreon and also if you have to even more reference photos I got a dedicated website just packed and packed with reference photos I think there's about 900 on there at the moment so that's wildlifeart-online.com now please with my youtube channel new videos coming on here as well if you can possibly subscribe to the channel then you're never going to miss out on new videos